Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to our session, second session for BMMP2540 material selection. So today I'll be talking about uh, the different engineering materials and their properties. And uh, for product design or material design, the, these properties of the materials are like a bargaining chip or the currency. So in that, uh, these different properties of materials that we trade off, that we uh, that we consider or what makes uh, a, a product or materials unique and in that we a certain properties that we want or certain properties that we don't need uh, certain properties that we prioritize or we, uh, we put in a, a lower priority so there are two learning outcomes that I will be talking about today first is understanding the materials available for product design and application and second understanding the different properties of materials and its units that are often considered so you've been exposed to the different uh, families of engineering materials in your second semester first year and also I've talked a little bit on the different families of engineering materials in our last session. So often we categorize uh, materials uh, in six uh, different categories that we uh, know now. Uh, the first is metals that are metals are stiff, it has uh, very high modulus it can uh, it has high toughness it can withstand uh, load and deform uh, plastically before failure I mean and it's a lot of uh, our civilization started uh, I mean, exponentially uh, expand uh, grow with metal uh, beginning uh, after the, the stone age then we have polymers that even propel uh, exponentially our industrial revolution with uh, polymers and also elastomers it ha polymers and elastomers normally it has lower moduli a lower strength but it has a uh, very high toughness it can withstand uh, deformation uh, plastically uh, before failure and we have glasses and ceramics uh, materials that we use early on in our solution until even today uh, decorative material decorative products uh, we use uh, these uh, materials it, uh, even though it has very high uh, moduli uh, like metal but it uh, deform uh, brittle it, it, it doesn't deform plastically uh, but though uh, it, it is weak in tension is very uh, strong in compression and for all of these materials can be combined into hybrid materials that are uh, it has uh, different attributes, uh, different properties than the constituent materials. Uh, we can combine metal with polymers, uh, metal with ceramics, polymer with glasses, elastomer with glasses. So different, we have different properties and different uh, uh, attributes that we want that we can design uh, for the materials. So next, what are the important materials information in design? What are the information that we want for the materials that we want to use in our product design so as you know data is thing the scammers use data uh, for our everyday life we, we are presented with data we have emails coming in we have uh, uh, when we go travel nowadays in our current situation we have to uh, log in check in using our my Sejahtera app so our government uses the data to track uh, to track uh, the current situation in the pandemic so Everywhere we have, we have to, uh, we are being bombarded. We are being collected with data, and with those data, we have, we move, we have knowledge, and into action. So what this, the materials that we have uh, nowadays is actually from extensive data collection, extensive uh, knowledge that that we uh, cultivate and then we put into action. So how do we get the data first? Is by uh, testing and this testing is according to international standard practices either uh, international ISO standards or using uh, American Society for for testing ASTM or uh, even uh, local uh, regional uh, testing standards for example like our own Malaysian standards or the European standards or even uh, the German DIN standards so these are different standards that that are available to collect data and how to capture data Next, from those data, we record and tabulate it, and this is what uh, we, we how 
uh, extrapolate and how we collect knowledge on those uh, information and from those uh, and from those uh, data from those uh, recorded and from those data and from those uh, tabulate or recorded okay, then we get into the the business side or the economics uh, side of the analysis which is the and how we use on all the, the applications that we want uh, whether or not it's profitable so this is how we use those uh, knowledge that we have collected from the raw data and the information that we tablet and from there this is an example of what we have uh, what we when we tabulate uh, all those information uh, we have a uh, general information like density price and mechanical inf uh, information mechanical properties of the material uh, thermal properties of the material electrical optical and also eco properties and this is just some of the example uh, this uh, table you can find in the uh, our textbook uh, the material selection in mechanical design uh, textbook from by michael ashby so the material properties and units so i'll talk a, bit, a little bit more uh, what are the properties and the units that we consider uh, for uh, material design and product design so we have about six uh, properties that generally that we uh, refer to when we want to uh, product design or material design those are the general properties mechanical properties thermal properties electrical optical and eco properties so what are these six properties and what are the units that we uh, uh, that we have to deal with so for general properties we have two uh, important properties first is density and with density it's relating to the materials weight and volume uh, for example uh, a material can have a very large volume but low in weight and that the material is lower density or material can have very low in volume that it's uh, its weight is, is higher than that is a material with a high density but at the same time with with these uh, two properties uh, the weight and also its volume we can design materials that have that we, according to what characteristics that we want what attributes that we want for example if a mat uh, we know that metal is very high density uh, when we put inside water it would uh, it would sink but that same metal when we design it uh, with a certain uh, thickness with a certain uh, design and uh, furthermore with uh, with uh, with uh, with uh, design considering uh, properties that we want we can put we can make a ship of metal even though it's high density and we put inside a water an ocean uh, even though it's uh, we consider a buoyancy a factor and it can it can float it won't it won't uh, submerge it won't sink in the water because of the design because of uh, when we uh, even though it is very uh, it is very heavy even though the density is is, is high and this consider with uh, meaning that although it's i'm um, talking uh, it, it's very uh, in its sim simplistic form but that is a, just a simple uh, example next is price and for the price uh, the unit is how much uh, according to the, the currency of uh, the region or the country and then over its weight and the cost of material is doesn't consider the cost of the processing or the cost of uh, treatment or the cost of painting secondary processing it's only co cost of material which is inclusive of the cost of extraction uh, to get uh, a, a unit or a kilogram of the materials and also this cost also is very uh, volatile uh, according to different condition of the market uh, if, uh, if the if material is in high demand, it will be, of course, will be, the price will be higher. If the material is in low in demand, uh, then the price will be uh, lower. But other consideration, like for example, if uh, material is, is not able to be uh, extracted uh, because of uh, because of uh, situation, for example, like uh, weather or because of natural disaster, then it can drive the price of the materials higher. So mechanical properties here, okay, we have about four uh, mechanical properties that normally 
materials engineer or design or product engineers uh, consider the first is the Young's modulus with the uh, uh, symbol of E capital E and this is re response to the the of the material and it's been uh, subjected to tensile or compressive loading and its units normally giga newton over squared, uh, squared meter or another way of saying it is then pascal which is the uh, the derivative of, of the unit of newton or uh, force over uh, area next is a uh, shear modulus with the capital of g in it and this is response to a material uh, being subjected to shear loading and also it has the same uh, unit as the as uh, Young's modulus next is uh, bulk modulus or uh, the unit is in K symbol and it's response to hydrostatic pressure and uh, the same unit uh, Newton over square meter and finally Poisson ratio uh, or in italic V okay and uh, this is the negative of the ratio of the lateral strain to the axial strain in axial loading so what are the things okay. Uh, as you see here, uh, this is the force being applied over the area. Okay, area, and this is pen perpendicular to the surface of the uh, material of the of being subjected to. And this is for shear modulus, which is uh, materials being subjected to a shear force, which is uh, parallel to the surface of the the of the material. Next is. Uh, for bulk modulus which is having isostatic uh, at, at all the surface of the material uh, being subjected to the uh, pressure or stress for, and this is an example of how we uh, what uh, the information that we gather from uh, the mechanical testing okay, we have uh, this is what we call as the modulus which is the slope between the rise of the stress over the run of the strain which is the information and at this point we call it as the yield strength uh, the ultimate strength is the highest point before uh, the highest strength of the materials uh, subjected to before uh, finally at fracture for Poisson ratio this is the what we call as the, the ratio between the lateral the lateral deformation lateral strain over the axial which is axial strain okay the, the ratio of this difference is 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 the definition of uh, Poisson ratio how important is Poisson ratio is that we can uh, know how a material behaves uh, when it's being subjected to load uh, and I mean if it has a <coughs> because according to the conservation of volume okay, if a material is subjected to uh, stress or external load and if we don't remove any uh, part or any uh, mass of the any volume of the material its changes uh, its changes is is evident to be in the in the changes of its dimension okay so from strength test okay of, of materials okay uh, that I just talked just not about uh, of those uh, yield strength uh, because ceramics resist uh, deformation higher in compression as opposed to in tension uh, for corpuses the strength is defined as the the deviation of the linear elastic behavior, behavior often at the offset of 0.5 is taken and is defined as the modulus of rupture so this is an example for metal uh, how we define the, the yield strength which is 2.2% from the strain this is being defined as the yield strength and for polymers we define it at the at the point it becomes non-linear this is at the 1% strain and for uh, ceramics for the tension at the uh, fracture strength is defined as the during tension and for uh, crushing strength we define it as the highest point of the for fracture and for composites we define the strength at the highest point before uh, it behaves uh, plastically I mean before permanent uh, deformation is occurred for hardness test this this character attribute is important for 
uh, when you use processing for example the machining because it gives uh, an approximate strength of the surface of the material okay, in hardness uh, the SI unit is also uh, megapascal and the material is measured by pressing a pointed diamond or hardened steel put into the material surface and the hardness is defined as the indentor force divided by the projected area of the indentation and, and normally the quantity we define it as the three times the fracture strength and we have uh, even the, the normal and for hardness we don't normally report it as a units of megapascal we report it according to scale because previously initially we one of the earliest scale that we used for detecting hardness is more scale where we rub uh, one material to another surface of material and if that material uh, leaves uh, foreign objects on the other material so that, that mater the material that, that is being removed of its uh, of its material is is softer than the material that that resists its uh, uh, scratch, uh, and then when we moved on, we because we have a different skill, different indentation, different shape. We have uh, normally we have either using rock pearl C refer to or rock pearl E, and because okay, and these are the range of the approximate yield strength that that the attributed to the material so fatigue test we perform to understand the material's behavior under cyclic loading when we remove and apply again the stress we want to see how much uh, how many cycles before the material fails and the the, the limit that the we the, the materials uh, we call it at uh, we call it as the fatigue or endurance limit and at a certain when we do uh, when we do the fatigue test we find that at a, at, at, one, at a certain value of stress if we go further than that uh, and we, if we go lower than this value if we can uh, maintain that, 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 that limit of stress uh, the material won't fail with, uh, we fail indefinitely it won't uh, uh, I mean fail because it, because it can sustain without uh, permanent uh, deformation on the material and normally we, we consider this at about more than 10 million cycles next for fracture toughness uh, is how we measure the resistance of material to the propagation of crack because uh, we know that all materials during certain process uh, certain process or certain during or even during fabrication there exist some form of deformation some form of uh, irregularities and that can lead to uh, small cracks so the fracture toughness when we test we understand how much uh, that material can resist before uh, crack and then until sudden uh, failure and then for thermal properties the two major uh, properties that we consider are the melting temperature and the glass temperature which uh, relate to the uh, fundamental strength of the bonds in the solids and for crystalline material it has a sharp melting point and it has, it has a distinct uh, melting point for non-crystalline materials the the glass temperature characterizes the transition from true solid to a very viscous liquid and this will help us design uh, a product or an application and that suits this characteristic for example a ma metal it has a it has a, before it has a very high melting uh, temperature but uh, at a certain uh, degree temperature it can behave in a, a more viscous liquid that we can uh, we can uh, change it it, uh, it proper its properties we can change it according to what kind of uh, uh, design of properties that we want so the, the T max is usually indicated the highest temperature at which the material can be reasonably be used without oxidation, chemical change, and the T min is the material becomes brittle or unsafe to use with. And electrical properties are important uh, attributes that we can say that is the electrical resistivity. Uh, the SI unit is ohm meter or micro ohm centimeter, and this is the resistance of a unit of cube with a unit potential between a pair of its faces, a pair of mat the same material face. And it has a very large, immense uh, range of values, meaning from the very lowest at 10 minus 8 for 
uh, good conductors and also 10 power of 16 for best insulators meaning that again this is electric uh, resistivity not conductivity so if it's conductivity then it will be uh, vice versa the value okay uh, because why you see it's negative 8 for conductor is because it has very low resistivity and why you see 10 over 16 for meter is because it is very high in electrical resistivity next for optical properties and you know all materials allow for some passage of movement of light although metal, for metal is exceedingly small and um, the speed of light through an indium material is always less than that in vacuum because it has it doesn't have any restriction uh, for the for the light to to go through and a consequence is that a beam of light striking the surface of a material at an angle incidence of a enters the material at an angle of b the angle of refraction the refractive index n index n is the speed of light in vacuum over the speed of light in the material itself which is seen as the degree of the incidence and over the sin of beta which is the degree of the angle of refraction and interestingly you know that uh, the mirror that you have at home is actually a, a glass uh, sheet that is being coated with a silver coating so that that silver is actually helps with the with the uh, refraction of your of your image of the of, uh, of light that's that is being projected onto it and finally for eco properties the the attributes that we consider is the embodied energy which is the mental joule over kilogram which the energy required to accept one kilogram of a material from its ores and feedstock and also we also consider all the materials carbon footprint which is the unit of kilogram over kilogram which is the what are the amount of carbon released into the production of the one kilogram of the material and with the current situation and current awareness of of uh, climate change of environmental awareness more and more uh, people are considering how much uh, how much carbon footprint how much energy is, is, is being used in the production and uh, ironically for example the current uh, iPhone 12 it's not uh, the reason behind why Apple is not is not releasing the iPhone 12 with its uh, charge package with a charger is because they say that they want to reduce its uh, carbon footprint, its impact on the on the on the environment. So, so thank you very much for your attention today. So, if you have any questions, you can post in the comments or in our Microsoft Teams channel. Uh, I hope you gain uh, some knowledge or some insight on what are the materials and what are the uh, properties that we consider in the in the in material selection in product design uh, so thank you very much and have a great day